Tell him who you are. I am the ghost of Christmas past. Fallen. Not bloody likely. This film is a sort of origin story of the Christmas Carol. Mr. Charles Dickens! Dickens was a rock star of that time, but falls from grace. So he's had a couple of flops. Oh, well, well, who hasn't? He was sort of going through a midlife crisis at 32. My lap's gone out. I've run out of ideas. He has hit a bit of a blank. The pressure was really mounting. He's got young children. He was overspending and yet was concerned about dwindling finances. What about an advance? You have a new book in mind? It's about a miser. On Christmas Eve, he meets some kind of supernatural guides. Does it have a title? Humbug a Miser's Lament. Christmas ghost story, Christmas song, Christmas ballad, something like that. Even if you'd already written it, we couldn't possibly get it illustrated. In only six weeks. This is what Charles Dickens had to go through to make the greatest Christmas book ever produced a reality. He had to publish it himself, he had it illustrated himself. He's got a lot on his shoulders. A jolly ghost. What's that mean? <laughs> he had this intense theatrical imagination. Get the name right and the character will appear. Yeah. There's a playfulness to the way in which these characters literally manifest. Scrooge. Shut the window! You think I'm made of money? Mr. Scrooge. How delightful to meet you, sir. Sorry, I can't say the same. Dickens talked about the characters in his books being more real to him than people he knew in his life. <sighs> They become his torturers in a way. He gets writer's block, and particularly Scrooge becomes his nemesis. I'm the author here. Allegedly, they all have their opinions and their suggestions. My character doesn't get to explain his side of things. So I've taken the liberty of writing a short speech. No. What Dickens created became important to the whole world. He completely changed the way people looked at poverty. Those people don't belong in books. Those people giving the poor. Dickens permeates the culture in a way that no other Christmas story does with the possibility of goodness and how do we treat our fellow man. Christmas wasn't celebrated quite that way before Christmas Carol. God bless us, everyone. It's the most extraordinarily charming and magical Christmas story. Oh, Mr. Scrooge, you and I are going to do wonderful things together. Merry Christmas to one and all. God bless us, everyone. So he's had a couple of flops. Well, who hasn't? You have a new book in mind? Oh, of course he does. My lamp's gone out. I've run out of ideas. Are we in trouble? No, of course not. I have told you not to disturb me when I am working. On Christmas Eve, the spirits pour into the night. Who well, here, Mr. Dickens? Pickpockets, streetwalkers, humbug. Those people don't belong in books. Charles! Come back! Come back! About a miser, and on Christmas Eve, he meets some kind of supernatural guides. Does it have a title? Humbug a Miser's Lament. Christmas ghost story, Christmas song, Christmas ballad, something like that. Get the name right, and the character will appear. Scratch, Scrounger. Come on, Scrooge. Shut the window. You think I'm made of money? Mr. Scrooge. How delightful to meet you, sir. Sorry, I can't say the same. You and I are going to do wonderful things together. How do you make a world come alive? I can almost see and hear them people. Even if you'd already written it, we couldn't possibly get it printed and distributed in only six weeks. If I can't finish it, I'll never write again. The characters won't do what I want. I'm the author here. Allegedly. A jolly ghost. What's that mean? <laughs> In the season of hope, we will shut out nothing and everyone will be welcome. I have to get to the princess by nine o'clock. But you still don't, don't have an ending. Merry, Merry Christmas to one and all. Enough. Back to work. God bless us, everyone.